with all the issues swirling around Parliament Hill, is the government of the day, is the business, the Canadian, the people's business getting done? Well, some say yes, some say no, but with a government that is just clinging on to power with every last breath, you have to wonder what's actually going on. Hello, I'm Adrian Boucher. With me are Lori Goldstein and Brian Lilly. Brian, we know that we have a bureaucracy, a very big bureaucracy that just churns out the, the government of the day's business. But with everything going on on the political side, these Liberal MPs that want Trudeau gone, the bloc giving them ultimatums and consequences, the Conservatives wanting to have confidence motions. Is there actual work getting done on Parliament Hill or is it all just sort of ground to a halt? Well, the business at the House of Commons is ground to a halt while the MPs discuss their question of privilege. And that's been going on since October 2nd. Uh, to explain what a question of privilege is and, and why this matters, I'll, I'll put it bluntly. Uh, Parliament demanded the government hand over documents in the green slush fund scandal, mm -hmm. and they refused. So that violates the rights of the members of the House of Commons. The Speaker has ruled that the government has to hand over the documents in the green slush fund scandal, and the government has refused. They've given over some documents, but not all. They've also you know, blacked out a lot of information, redacted information. Uh, this goes against how Parliament is supposed to work. So since October 2nd, this is all that they've been debating. Question periods happened, committee business is still going on, but the Trudeau government was supposed to introduce their Ways and Means motion to pass and, and make official the changes to the capital gains taxes. And they haven't been able to do that. They can't put forward any legislation, they can't do any government business. I've got to say that there's been a bit of coverage about this and some passing mention of it. But if this were, I don't know, let's say Stephen Harper's government was unable to function in Parliament for an entire month, that would be the nonstop story and the drumming would be happening like the 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 guy at the front of the slave ship and Ben-Hur, doom, doom, doom. Mm -hmm. It'd just be nonstop. Yeah, that's not really happening because it's Justin Trudeau. So Let's talk about him and how great he is. You know, but, uh, Laurie, there is a, a, a sort of a battle cry that you hear from the Liberals now that the Conservatives are going to be a, uh, an existential threat to democracy and that there is, um, if you, you know, they're just trying to scare, use those American style tactics that they're, the Democrats are using against Trump, throwing that on, on Polya, fairly or not, it's debatable, probably more unfair. But I, I'm wondering, we have this issue with the green slush fund. We have this issue with the House of Commons grinding to a halt. But overarching that, and I bring up the issue of democracy, is we have very real and credible threats of foreign interference in our, our elections. And the Liberals have done nothing. Trudeau has done nothing. His foreign um, secretary, our uh, minister did nothing. Staff sat on warrants for, for, for weeks. Um, they don't seem to be taking it seriously. But suddenly, Trudeau has said, well, well I'm going to find the names of the Conservatives who may be under threat or under influence and, and hand those over. I, tr make some sense of this one. Two things. Uh, the point Brian raised about the, um, accurately, about the refusal to hand over documents in the Green, this is the first time the Liberals have done this. The Winnipeg High Priority Lab that, that you know, examines deadly vote. Remember that? Same thing happened. Parliament asked for documents. The speaker ruled in favor. And what killed that was the election. Everything went, you know, so so they, they, they've done it before. The second thing is just the facts, as you say. For two years now, we know that the prime minister's own special committee of parliamentarians that he appointed, it's his creature. That's why it reports to him, that's why he's the only person who can release it if he wants to, said there were um, parliamentarians, and we now know from uh, you know liberals and conservatives and possibly others, we don't even know, um, who wittingly or unwittingly engaged in foreign interference. Two years, and we have no idea who those people are. Mm -hmm. We have no idea if any action has been taken against them. We have no idea whether they're the, the, the whether they're going to be able to run again. We have no idea whether there are other people that maybe the committee didn't um, uncover or hasn't come out. Like this is in a democracy. This is a cancer 
eating, eating at our democracy. And it seems to me that what Trudeau wants to do is to just cover it in, in oh, well, look, the, 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 the PCs did it with India. They think that's an answer. Mm -hmm. They think we're not concerned if, if India was involved in the Tory leadership race. They think we're not concerned if China was involved in nomination meetings. Like, like they don't understand that if you talk to people about this issue, what ordinary Canadians, they don't care what party anybody belonged to who was involved in this stuff. They want to know. And this government is actively pursuing means to not tell us. And so rather ironic, isn't it, that um, you know, liberal MPs are saying that Pierre Polyev is the threat to democracy? Really? Mm -hmm. With what you guys are doing? Really? Yeah, keep flying that one. We'll see how it goes. You know, Brian, it's um I, I don't think it is gonna fly. And look, Canadians aren't seized with the notion of foreign interference in our elections. They're they're, they're just not. Um, they go to the ballot box, they expect that things are gonna be fair and and, and and whatnot. And for the most part, we it's it's been decent in this country. But there is this looming threat. There are there are these realities of influence. And Playing games with this, as Trudeau has been, who is that benefiting? Who does that win over? Like, to what end does does that those that gamesmanship on this benefit? It benefits him because it keeps everything secret, and it'll tie together the green slush fund and the foreign interference and the Winnipeg lab story. Uh, Justin Trudeau is running the most secretive government in decades. Um, you'd have to go back to the Cold War or uh, active shooting wars to find a government more secret. And I seem to recall being in the room with him uh, in the parliamentary press theater when he declared that he would run a government that would be open by default. And he promised that long before the 2015 election. Then he promised it all through the 2015 election. He, you know, they stood up and uh, talked endlessly after they were elected about openness and transparency. They want none of it. And so in the Winnipeg lab uh, scandal, that was going to show that they were incompetent and asleep at the switch. They covered it up. They would rather Parliament grind to a halt than release what is in the green slush fund, where we know 90 cases of conflict of interest, millions, tens of millions of dollars misspent, sent to companies with liberal ties. They don't want that information out. And on foreign interference, they want it shut down so much that they don't want to release the names. They fought a, uh, a public inquiry. And when Trudeau was, was asked about releasing names or acting, he actually said that Pierre Polyev should get briefed because then he can act like I did. And you can make up a story about why someone can't run. Polyev's <laughs> answer to all of this has been, release the names. Yeah. You know, so if, if he's not worried, and he knows his own party will be hurt by this, but other parties are involved in well, as well. He says, release the names, be honest with Canadians on every issue. Justin Trudeau knows things are so bad for him that he wants it covered up. Laurie, last word to you, quick one on this. Um, you know, there is a way to shut all of this down, to make this all go away. I mean, look, we're going to still hold him accountable for it. And that's to prorogue the House. Is that something that you think Trudeau might just do? Um, he could, but it doesn't really help. It just makes it worse. If he does that, then immediately all these things that Brian and, and all of us have been talking about become, it's like an aha moment. Well, there must mm -hmm. be something. Mm -hmm. Now look, other politicians have used Perot for political purposes. Stephen Harper did when there was this, you know, Thing where the opposition parties were combined to, to form the government and he he prorogued so it's not like it isn't used as, as a tool right but um but add on to all these things that the inquiry that pierre trudeau sorry justin trudeau fought against and had his friend david johnson do the the thing that, that nobody thought was credible right like <laughs> They did that. Now they're fighting with the inquiry about releasing documents the inquiry wants. Um, so, you know, the only way out of this would be to be open and transparent. Okay. Simply adding new layers of 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 misdirection and propaganda and look over here, the look over here, folks, look over here. That's not that's not helping. 
And um, you know, I agree. Canadians are not immediately seized with this, but this issue is percolating. You know, there are real concerns about uh, foreign interference in Canada, in the United States, um, because this stuff with India, you know, isn't just going on in Canada. And and it's scary stuff. And you need leaders who are committed to democracy. And I don't think right now in Canada, we have a prime minister who's committed to that. Well, let us know what you think in the comments below. Like this video and subscribe to our YouTube channel and go to the torontosun.com. You'll find commentary and coverage there you will not find anywhere else.